Hey guys, AB here from BH. I am practicing social distancing like the rest of my team. Something that I've wanted to do for a long time is record household items and use those sounds to make a beat. Honestly, the main reason I'm doing this particular kind of project, there are two reasons. One is I think it'll be a good challenge and it will allow me to use some of my skills. But the other reason is that we get hung up all the time on sounds and the number of sounds and gear that we have at our disposal. It's almost like, oh, if I only had this, then I'd be fine. This is really an exercise to show that, hey, you know what? Even confined to your house with a microphone or two and some things lying around, I bet you can make a beat. Of course, in this house, there's a bunch of stuff, but I'm going to use a black stool. That's gonna be my drum. That's gonna be the foundation of the track, okay? And then I'll add some other stuff like this tambourine, which I envision being the snare. It's got a rattle to it. I think it'll make a nice little snare sound. Then we've got a shaker, which is actually a dumbbell, but it's, it's a kid's dumbbell. So, you know, we can kind of kill two birds with one stone. Get a little workout in and uh, add some shaker to the track. Got this one lonely castanet, which I will put in there somewhere with some kind of rhythmic thing. Um, a vase, gotta put a vase in there because every house is a vase. And I think this is gonna be more of a high pitched, almost like a, a bell type sound. Of course, we gotta have a guiro, right? You gotta have a guiro, man. You, know, I mean, you need that sound uh, for that rhythmic percussive stuff going on. And the only melodic instrument that I'm actually including is this kid's xylophone. So, so essentially, the idea is record a bunch of parts um, and then bring them into Pro Tools, add some treatment using plugins and stuff like that, and get it to sound beefier than you would imagine it to sound. I'm using an SM57 for the stool because that's really a percussive thing and it's gonna be pretty loud. And then I decided that I'm just gonna use the, um, I have a Sony omnidirectional condenser mic, which I'm gonna use for all the other stuff because I mean, I could use the cardioid version of that mic as well, but I just, sometimes there are no rules when you're being creative. I mean, you do what you feel is right. So without further ado, let's get to it. This is the foundation. Yeah. All right, now comes the crazy part. We've got to import everything into Pro Tools and try to add effects and plugins that are gonna make everything sound, you know, really beefy. I chose sort of like the best parts of each take and I essentially looped those. So let's start with the foundation, that drum that I was hitting. And here's what it sounds like, just raw. Okay. So that's what I recorded. Now, what I wanna do is show you what I did to it to really give it some treatment. The thing is, it's it sounds okay, it's a little hollow, and I know that EQ is one of the things that's gonna solve that right away. EQ is a very underutilized uh, tool. A lot of people are all about compression, but you know, to get something to sound good and to sort of enhance the sounds you want and take away the sounds you don't want, you really need EQ. 
So basically, I have the Cambridge EQ, part of the uh, Universal Audio universe. I boosted what I wanted in the low end to make it sound more like a kick, but I cut out a lot of stuff that I didn't like that I was hearing. So here's it without the EQ. Right? And now with the EQ, If you can't tell the difference, you should be using headphones, first of all. Second of all, listen to the, the bass drum, as it were. Uh, it's, it's a lot fuller and it's a lot less boxy sound when the EQ is engaged. One more time. There we go. Great. Now, because I only have one drum loop, this loop has to serve both as you know the bass drum and the snare, even though I did overdub another part for a snare. So I'm treating this just as I would any loop that I got from a loop library, right? So I added another EQ. This is a FabFilter Pro Q2. Um, and I essentially just wanted to shelve the higher part of, of the loop. I didn't want to really affect the low end too much. That's already being handled by the first EQ. But this is going to just kind of accentuate some of the higher frequencies and hopefully give me a little bit more of a snap that I would want if you were listening for a snare in a loop, right? So without, with, out, with. Pretty cool, you can actually hear me breathing in there too. Not that I want that, but I'm not gonna take that out. Um, on top of that, there's a another plugin that I wanted to put, which is a subharmonizer, just to give a little bit of subharmonic low end. It's kind of hard to hear if you don't have a really good pair of headphones or a good pair of speakers, but this is just something that will translate definitely to a bigger uh, set of monitors. But you can you can kind of hear what's going on. It's just adding a little harmonic in the low end. Let me see if you can uh, hear that. This is without the sub. With the sub. Out. It's subtle. If you're listening on speakers, you're probably gonna hear that. So, that is some basic treatment that I did. Now, here's the thing. Where things get really interesting is where I took this loop and I threw it to one of my favorite plugins, which is something that I use for parallel processing, especially with drums a lot. Um, and that's Isotope's Trash 2. And let me just show you that right now, because really this is kind of what changes the game, as it were. Trash 2 is sort of, is a very gritty, uh, it's just a dirty, dirty plugin, which has lots of presets, but also allows you to really customize um, lots of things. You could add sine waves, square waves, you can, I mean, honestly, you can pretty much do anything you want. And before showing you this process, I actually went through a whole bunch of stuff and tried to figure out what I thought sounded good. And I came up with a, a custom plugin that I named AB Grit, you can see at the top. This is gonna make this drum loop just go from a simple, you know, okay performance to a crazy, dirty, gritty loop that you could just use on its own. Um, so let's check it out. Right? Oh. What? I mean, look. We don't even need to add anything else. We can just stop right here. I mean, <laughs> okay. So, you just got a good MC. You don't really need any other parts. But, uh, but that's, so that right there is important. I think it's actually important to sort of set the foundation uh, being the drums uh, and rhythm section in general. I'm a drummer, but, and yeah, I'm biased, but pretty much most modern music is centered around a really good uh, rhythmic landscape, right? And if you have the drums sounding that gritty and that, and that full, it's gonna inspire you to add more things on top of that. All right, so we got the drum foundation going. Sweet. Let's now move on to the tambourine, which I was using as a snare, right? This tambourine is gonna add just a little bit more punch snare wise. So let's see what this tambourine sounds like by itself first. Okay, fine. 
Um, again, I'm gonna add some EQ. Uh, remember, there's no universal EQ that works every time with every instrument. Every EQ choice uh, is specific to the sound that you are, you are manipulating. And of course, in general, it's supposed to work well with all the other sounds. Because I don't have more instruments besides drums at this point, I'm just trying to get this tambourine to sound like the snare I have in my head as much as it can without being a snare. So first thing I did was do some fairly aggressive cutting at 254 and then some boosting at about 2000 uh, hertz. So without, with, without, it's a little dull, a little brighter. You can really hear that, Gah! right? All right, and then actually, I, after that, I put a compressor. People ask, do you compress first, EQ later? Everyone's got different approaches to that. I used to compress first all the time and then EQ, but what I found is that I like EQing now first just to sort of mold the sound that I have. It's almost like when you record an instrument, whether that's a guitar or a bass or whatever, you really want to try to get that sound the way you want it before you do anything else to it. And so I kind of look at EQ the same way. If I can EQ whatever I've recorded uh, to make it sound the way I would have wanted it to sound if I record when I recorded it, um, then I can go ahead and then compress and EQ some more after the fact. So I tend to EQ now first before I compress. Anyway, here's a DBX 160. All the plugins I'm using for the most part are, are universal audio plugins because I have an Apollo. Um, and the 160 is a great plugin for very uh, snappy uh, sounds with with the transients. I I'm using this really mostly just to I wanted to bring out the the attack of the tambourine um, because without it it sounds kind of flat. Like here's the tambourine. Just listen to it for a second. Right? It's just it's like one sound. But when you you know when you aggressively compress it or at least you know, tweak it, I can get it so that you hear the attack and then you're gonna hear like a tail after it, which for me just gives it some movement. So here's without, here's with, you hear that? Without, it's a little tail, but now the tail's gonna come out, here we go. So it's subtle, um, but a lot of subtleties add up to an effect that is cumulative. Great, so we have that, and you notice I have some sends here. I'm not gonna get to those sends yet, although I will, you know what I'll do? I am gonna send this to the same trash that I sent the foundation to. So let's listen to those two uh, together. Nice, I already like it, it's going great. The next one we're gonna to get to here is the dumbbell. And same approach, let me get through these quickly. Dumbbell sounds like this. I've already panned it left. That's kind of where I want it. Added some EQ. You see how that brings out more of the high end. Well, I like Pro-Q too, and a lot of these modern EQs are great because they actually show you the waveform underneath. You can see where stuff's happening. Um, I didn't look at that and say, oh, there's, look at that peak, I'm gonna boost there. But it's nice to be able to see something if you really wanna pinpoint something to either boost or cut, right? So we've got that going. You may notice that there's something that's, there's, I have a bus five here on this uh, track. And what, it, what I'm doing is actually a, a trick that is not, it's nothing new, but if you ever have a mono track and you really wanna turn it into a stereo track, well, the easiest way to do that is to send it to an auxiliary track, put a delay on that auxiliary track, and then hard pan the original and the aux track. So I've done that. I have sent this on bus five to this track called Split, which is receiving bus five, and you wanna put a delay on there. You need to put a delay, a pretty short delay, I would say close to 30 seconds, anywhere between 25 and 30 seconds um, will most likely work. So without, and with, which is nice. So now you've got 
a, you know, a stereo shaker when you only recorded one, which is, which is great. So those so far we've got. Awesome. All right, next, let's go to that uh, castanet. <laughs> um, by itself. Nice, sounds good. So I, I really just wanted to overly compress this just to kind of like, I don't know, it, just to make it feel like it's even pumping more than it really is. Uh, I use uh, Waves Renaissance plugins a lot now. I used to use them back in the day and I rediscovered them. So this, this is great because it has EQ and compression and a bunch of other features on it. Uh, so I was able to kind of do both. Uh, and so this is what it sounds like with the plugin. There's also a gate on there, which is nice. Without. With. So that's going to stand out a lot more. And of course, I sent that to the trash as well, right? So now what we're working with so far. All right, I'm liking what I'm hearing. Uh, all right, cool. Let's move on to the glass vase, which, yeah, I mean, it's this is uh, now I chopped this up in a way that it's not it's a, it's kind of an imperfect edit because there are parts that are that get cut off a little bit and stuff, but I don't I don't really care honestly. Within the mix of everything, with these drums being so gritty, you're not going to be able to hear any of those little imperfections. Plus, I think in the case of this particular part that little imperfection, which you may or may not even hear, uh, is part of what makes it unique. So it doesn't just sound like a perfectly quantized, you know, part. So this is what it sounds like so far, as, as is. See, little imperfections, but I don't care about that. And then I added a Tutec uh, CL1B. This actually, this is, this is a great this is a great uh, compressor for vocals. Um, in fact, the hardware unit is one of the most highly coveted pieces. I don't own that. Um, I have several software versions, but this is yeah, this one works great. I really was just trying to bring it out a little bit more and just make it you know dance a little bit more. So this is it with the compressor. Without. It's very subtle. With. It's pumping a little bit more, which is kind of cool, which I like. All right, so we've got that going. And with everything else so far. Cool. Now, let's go on to the Guido. Guido. Uh, again, I chopped this up in a certain way. It's not perfect, but I like that. So we've got the Guido raw without any processing. And of course, you know, I'm going to EQ it. So here we go. Nice, just to bring out a little bit more of the higher registers. Here's uh, an 1176 compressor, uh, which, you know, it's it's a classic. You're getting the benefit of a plugin that works very well, like the hardware, but you're also getting the, you know, the, the modeled sound of the original hardware unit. And that's important too. Sometimes you can just run it through the plugin and not turn any knobs, and it gives you the sound you want. But for this, I'm using it to kind of add some kind of uh, uh, movement. So here we go, without, with, Without. It's the little underneath stuff that comes out. I like it. And of course, I sent this to the trash as well. Right? Now with everything. OK, 
Okay, and last but certainly not least, we have got the xylophone. And the xylophone, uh, again, is the only melodic part of this song. So let me play you just the loop by itself very quickly, and then let's show you what I added to it. Right, pretty innocuous. So the first thing I wanted to do was kind of um, just mess with the sound a little bit and just have it sound not so pretty. So I added this Moog uh, multi-mode filter, which, and I went through a couple presets and I just picked something that I thought sounded cool. So this is it with the preset. Uh. Gives it some dirt and some delay, right? Which is really cool. And then I added a Renaissance Axe, which is a great uh, compressing plugin for lots of instruments. I think, you know, originally years ago it was marketed for guitars and stuff like that, but you can use it on anything. Uh, and I just wanted to put it in a place where I felt like it was just, you know, moving and staying relatively well, for lack of a better expression. I mean, I'm compressing it nicely here. I like that. I just like the way that sounds. And so, so far we've got... Now, bus 9 and 10, which you see here, uh, is sending this to something else. I'm actually sending it to the movement plugin, which is an output um, product, which is great. It has lots of different effects, like delays and pans and all kinds of modulations. Um, and I just, again, messed with that to see what made sense. So then you add it in. See that? Mm. Yeah. There are a couple other things I should mention. Um, for the tambourine, I sent that to a reverb. I've got this little EMT here. So just to add a little bit of depth to that. And that's pretty much it. The only other thing I would say is this. Again, this is really more of sort of a, a very quick approach, but and I'm not doing any major tweaking as it were. Um, and I haven't added any other parts from synths or anything like that. But honestly, just as, as is, you could use this as a foundation um, for a track. You know, if you were making some kind of hip hop or if you were an MC yourself and you wanted to start rhyming, I mean, you really, you can go right away with what you've got here. Um, the only other thing I would do maybe is if I were going to work on it some more or, or really if I were gonna hand it off to somebody and I wanted to beef it up just a little bit more without adding any other musical parts, um, on the master fader, we could do some processing. So the first plugin I have on here is what I would consider to be one of the best plugins ever made. I know this sounds crazy and it's a very bold statement, but Brainworks BX1 is one of these plugins that, man, it really just does what it does well. So what, what's great about this plugin is that it allows you to really tweak the frequencies both in the mono section, sort of up the middle of your content, and on the sides, right? As you can see on the graph here, we've got mono, we've got the stereo, and What's really cool is that as you manipulate the frequencies, the plugin basically cuts everything out and solos the frequency that you're working with. You could have this on your master fader and, and really pinpoint the parts you want to improve uh, very easily. And it's, and it's very musical and it doesn't impart really its own sound onto things, which is nice. Um, but anyway, let me put my plugin in because I saved my own. I sold the item. Okay, so this is the first one I have on. Without hair, see, it's a little dull or duller. Now with, nice. 
Next, I put on a maximizer. I just wanted it to kind of give it some, some grit. So this is without it. With. Without. With. Nice. And last but not least, I normally don't use limiters um, when I'm mixing or even obviously producing stuff. But if you wanted to pass this track along to somebody and you knew they liked, they like to hear stuff just like loud and just crunchy and banging, even if you're not going to use this on your final version, just really more as a, you know, hey, work with this, uh, get inspired. Uh, Oxford limiter. Again, I believe one of the best uh, plugins out there. Definitely very powerful tool, can be overused pretty easily. But I, I love it because not only does it give you really fine-tuned controls over you know, your, your levels and, and what have you, but it gives you the ability to enhance the sound with even more harmonic uh, data and other stuff. So Oxford Limiter, great, great plugin. And I just put that on there just as a, hey, you know, if you wanted to just have a final not final version for somebody. So this is it without. Now with. So let's listen one more time to uh, everything without any processing and then we'll check out the final result, all right? I mean, sounds pretty good. Now, we put everything back in, and we're good to go. Here we go. This is pretty cool, man. I think, you know, it came out a lot better than I thought it was gonna come out. I mean, I, I knew that I could manipulate the sounds and, and make them sound good, but it's just amazing when you actually go through the exercise and you listen to, you know, what you started with and then you listen to the end result. It, there's so much you can do with the gear you have and the tools you have. Hope you enjoyed the video. Thanks so much for watching. AB from B&H, and I'll see you next time.